Hello, everyone, and welcome to Face Turn with Candace Cordelia. I'm your host, Candace Cordelia. Today, for another special segment of Mission Pro Week, I am here with the Mission Pro Wrestling Champion, Holiday. You might see or might have seen her in many, many other promotions like Ring of Honor, MLW, but today we are going to talk about Mission Pro, her role as champion, and what she's been up to since clinching that title. First and foremost, Holiday, how are you today? Thank you. Thank you. I am lovely over here in the other side of darkness. The weather is changing all over here as well. So, you know, trying to stay warm, not get sick, all that good stuff. Yes, you can't get sick. Not at this time. It's you're no, on no, a roll. No, I, I mean it's it's like wrestling, just like with injuries. If we get sick, we nothing happens. If we get injured, tape it up. We're good. Keep it, keep it moving. Exactly. It doesn't, matter. it doesn't matter. Yes, yes, and that's what we love about you, Holiday. Your attitude is pretty much rocking and rolling, keeping it going, and just kicking tail along the way. And congratulations, you're the MPW champion. That's such an honor. How are you feeling about that being the title holder? I don't know. It's still it's still really weird. Uh, at this point in my career, I don't know. I've, I've I had set in my mind in a, in a place of just a, okay. I'm sorry. Is this PG? Is this? Do you need me to watch my language? I need. I should have asked. I'm sorry. Watching language would be preferred, but if if something All right, okay, is not okay, in the okay. passion, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, my vocabulary. Okay, I'm gonna. I have to rewire my brain really quick. All right, I'm gonna do my best. Um, so still a little weird. I in my mind I had put myself on, you know, I don't know how much time I got left in wrestling. It just we just gonna have some bangers rock it out till we're done and clock it out. And now I have a title, it's like, oh, okay, there's some responsibility that comes with this. So it's a little weird. It's like, okay, I guess I can't hang it up anytime soon. I gotta be around. And I mean, it, it's still like you said, for me, it's still rocking and rolling, still same thing bangers only every match like it's your last keep it moving but now you know I gotta I gotta I gotta watch my p's and q's a little bit I guess I got a company to represent so I gotta watch the way I do certain things but I mean like beyond that like me as me holiday is still it's business as usual like let's go put on some bangers let's go let's go work here let's go work there let's do these effing matches let's let's go let's rock and roll like you said business as usual Let's, let's keep it moving Yeah, absolutely. And it's even more special for you because in a way you're reuniting with your twisted sister, Thunder Rosa. You know, how did your getting into the ranks of MPW start? When did the conversation begin? Um, So people know, you know, Thunder Rosa, that's my best friend. We've been in our uh, our sistership. It's my my wrestling wife. We call each other uh, for several years now. So like uh, I've been around her. And her husband, when they, you know, they first started a company a while back and then they relocated to Texas, started another one, Mission Pro. Originally, it was just, you know, I get I don't want to call it a regular, but it was a regular independent promotion. And then uh, at the height of the Me Too movement, you know, um, so Thunder decided to make a change like, you know, we need a uh, we need a true safe place for women. You know, people keep talking about it, but nobody in the business is doing anything. And, you know, her her husband was like, yeah, let's, you know shift the gears the mission pro we're making this all women top to bottom announcers ring crew everything and um like i knew she was doing it and she put a post on like facebook saying anyone that wants to help i jokingly responded to a post and said hey if you need a color commentator i'm available i was joking like i I was gonna be there to help whatever and then i I messaged her husband brian like hey whatever you guys need help with let me know and she's like i think thunder already has you down for commentary i'm like oh i guess i'm doing commentary okay all right that's that's that so (laughs) And uh, it started out as commentary and, you know, I was happy to be there. Um, but sitting behind the commentary table, I it's like that wrestler's itch. It was like, I'm not injured or anything. And I'm just seeing these killer matches after match after match. And it's like, oh, man, like I, w- I want to be out there. And that's that's what it was like after every commentator table was like, OK, I need I need to be I need a match. I need to be on the show. I don't care if I got to do commentary and wrestle. And it was like that for a minute. Like they they let me take the headset off for a second, you know, get behind the ring and then do the commentator thing. And then I've been, I think eventually they're like, we can't have you doing both. You just want to get in the ring, go ahead, get in the ring. And then that, you know, that, that's my passion first. That's what I love to do. And so it, it rolled on to that. And I'm happy to be a core member of the mission pro family. And I'm very much subscribed to everything that they're about in the mission and what they're trying to move forward with. So, mm, And it absolutely worked out for you because you're the mission pro current champion. So 
Yeah, not what I was not, not what I had in mind at all. You know, I just I just wanted to work again. Like I said, I just at this point in my career, let's just do some bangers. But all right, I guess some responsibility now. It's weird. It's weird responsibility. Yeah. 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 What's one thing that you noticed when you made your way to Texas and to Mission Pro that really stood out for you in terms of how the promotion conducts its business and everything that you noticed behind the scenes? Uh, Mission Pro, true, it is an independent promotion, but like. I feel the word indie or independent promotion wrestling it has a bad reputation with it for uh, different reasons. There are some shindy promotions out there like that don't give a F or whatever. Like there's no there's no ring skirts or like just everything about it is not done professional. And so people correlate all independent promotion wrestling with that. Like like as far as I've known, Thunder Rosa, like she is extreme. Everything she does is like to the 10th. And that's her. And I and I freaking love her for it because I feel like anyone she's around or anytime you work with her, she's going to bring the best out in you. And that's, that's what mission pro is. It's like, it's not just another promotion. Like they're taking stuff to the next level. We got, you know, we got cameras. We work for a hard cam. We work for TV. We work for time. Um, we are a full female crew top to bottom. We put the ring together. We break it down. We got women announcers, women on commentary. Like we are it. We're doing everything. Like there's so much online preaching about sisterhood and women empowerment, but like, it is actually legit there. It's like everybody legit wants to lift each other up. Everybody wants to be in a better position. It's like, it's no cattiness. It's, it's a real family vibe. And you don't get that a lot in wrestling because a lot of times people are clawing at each other. I want this spot. I want that. It's like, it's it's a real camaraderie. And like, and people are gravitating towards it and they see it and they want to be a part of it. Like it's only growing and going to continue to grow from here. And I noticed that you're wearing your Shimmer track jacket love shimmer as well and we've seen the journey of women's wrestling uh, in the past several decades i mean you're on the women's pwi 150 so i gotta give you your your <laughs> i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know i don't know i don't know i have it right here thank you thank you thank you okay you know i knew i i, 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 I had i don't have the magazine so i wasn't able to read it but thank you guys for acknowledging that i'm out here i appreciate it we're we're like you're welcome. It's a testament to the hard work that you've done during just within this year alone, right? And and getting back to women's wrestling, what are your thoughts about women's wrestling as a whole as you've seen it from the time that you started in your career to present day and working with Mission Pro? Um, it's it's definitely grown. Um I know there's this whole talk about like, you know, the women's revolution and women empowerment and I feel like uh, I feel like it's a failure, honestly, on some of these bigger companies. I feel like women's wrestling has continued to grow on the independent level. It's always been there. It's always been a spotlight. Like there's always been the shimmers, the shines, uh, beyond wrestling has WWR. Like it's always been on the independent level. And now with mission pro, like there's always been that platform for us to shine and be spotlighted. And I feel like it's more of the bigger companies that are like, we're going to get on this now women's empowerment. Like, I feel like and it's always been like that. They see it happen on the independent circuit and those who aren't familiar and only with the mainstream, they think it happens at the mainstream level. And it's not, they're always, they're always looking at the independent level. And I feel like um, it's a lot of these bigger companies that are like, we're going to do more for women, but like you still have one women's matches on certain shows or like they're three minute matches and stuff. So like, I feel like the independent scenes, we're doing our part, but again, it has to trickle over to the mainstream. Like, for a change to really, really happen and it to be seen in a certain way. So I feel like it's come a ways, but we still have, we still have a ways to go. Like there's still so much more work to be done. Hmm. Where do you see women's wrestling going in 2022? Do you think that it's still going to stay the same in terms of the bigger promotions uh, trickling or dabbling as, as it sounds in the matches, or do you think we're going to see more women's matches in these bigger promotions? Or do you think that it's just going to stay exactly as it is right now i think we'll see more but i still think it won't be enough as far as the bigger companies are concerned like i don't want to put any names out there but like you have certain companies you only have one women's match on certain shows and like even some places that i'm starting to work at that are now you know u- utilizing women like it's it's still a one woman it's a one woman's match per show and so mission pro we kind of do the opposite just it's like as a little gag like we have one men's match 
and we joke, that's our popcorn match, you know, go to the bathroom during that match, whatever, because that's how we're used to being done. The women's match is the one match. That's the popcorn match. Everybody go get your beer, go to the bathroom. You don't need to see this come back when the real action happens. And I, I, I would like to say that I think there's going to be a change, but I think it's it's still so much time. I feel like it's not just in wrestling. It's a societal thing, just like women, we have to find our place in the world in general. This is a man's world and we have to work twice as hard for everything uh it's gonna take time I don't, I don't see a drastic change happening right away unfortunately that's my view hopefully i'm wrong prove me wrong big companies make me a believer yeah and on that same note you know there's been an emergence of black talent in wrestling as well just within the past several years alone and for you what do you think about this emergence and how do you see the tide changing also going into the future for black talent in wrestling uh, okay, I hope I'm not like a negative Nancy all on your show or whatever. Uh, I, I, that goes back to the same with the women, like uh, double minority right here, you know, black woman wrestler. Like uh, there, there hasn't been an emergence of black talent. It's always been there. It's just the fact that companies have to utilize us and that we're just like the women. We're not a freaking spe- special attraction. We are, we're athletes, we're wrestlers, we're in here. We can do it just as good as anyone else. But again, you know, wrestling goes back to having, I mean, and it's, a, it's a whole society thing. I just paint it like, you know, the standard wrestler, blonde, blue eyes, like that's been the mold. That's been, you know, what people have been looking at. And it's like, there, there hasn't been an emergence. We've always been here. Just like use us, put us in more than one match. I, I remember like at one indie show, like it was me and three other wrestlers. I won't say any names. Uh, uh, two of us were black Two of the other girls were white. The promoter came and was like, Hey, it's gonna be you two versus you two in a tag match. And we're like, why are you sticking us together? He's like, what do you think? Uh, duh, whites, blacks. And we're just like, wow, damn. Sorry, like, wow. Is it? It's, it's like it's like that. Like, you know, it just like they not, they had no problem saying it. Like, yeah, you guys are black, you guys are white, putting you guys together, obvious for obvious reasons. Like, and I feel like a lot of promoters still have that mindset. Like, all right, we got our one black on the card. We got our one re- uh, woman on the card. Like, it's. It's a it's a forever uphill battle. I feel like there was never an even playing field. So I feel like it's always going to be a continuous battle. Like there's not an emergence of women's wrestlers. There's not an emergence of black wrestlers. We've always been here. It's just people have to open their eyes and recognize that, you know, a wrestler is a wrestler, regardless of skin or gender or whatever. You want to put on the put the best people out there and you'll have the best product. That's as simple as they. And it appears that that is exactly what Thunder Rosa and Brian are doing over at Mission Pro Wrestling, the diversity is, it's amazing to see. And just the caliber of matches, I mean, this promotion has only been around for several years, I believe back dating to 2019. Where do you see Mission Pro going in 2022 and beyond and growing and and your role in the company as well? Um, Only up from here again, I said Thunder Rosa, she's a very extreme, intense person. Uh, same with Brian, you know, I used to live with those guys and, and, you know, even before Thunder, she'd be like, okay, are you ready for this? Can you live with us? Can you handle this? Can you handle this? And like, you know, we even talk about like, you know, maybe one day living together again. She's like, are you ready for this? Are you ready for the Cervantes? Can you live with us again? I'm like, I don't know, bro. I might need a minute. I don't know. You know, cause like, cause they're, they are like extremely passionate people about this business and about it being done the right way. And they, and they want to see hard work being praised. And it's a messed up thing because in our business, it's always not about who's the best worker, who's the hardest worker. Sometimes it's about the politics of it. And Mission Pro is not about any of that at all. Like, we just want to see good A wrestlers, like, that want to work hard, want to put on the best matches. And like, and like you say, you look at the locker room, it's like one of the most diverse freaking locker rooms I've ever been in. It's like, we can have, a, I don't know, what's that thing you did in school or like everybody from different nationalities or something like like it's it's legit that there, there's somebody from everywhere. There's something you can take from everybody. Like, uh, and I know Mission Pro has plans. I won't, you know, put it out there. I'll let them say, but, but, you know, things are happening. You definitely 2022 expect to see Mission Pro, like always some of everywhere. Like, you know, we're, we're always streaming on title match network. One of the highest streams, you know, actually one of the few independent promotions when we're running, we're actually trending on Twitter, which is a big thing in life. So it's like, whoa, uh, you know, uh, Thunder Rosa has put me in into some business positions and mentioned pro. I don't know if I'm allowed to say or whatever, but uh, you know, so um, again, that's my best friend that you know I know how she is business minded and um, 
it's not necessarily for me. It's not a reuniting. It's just like business as usual. Like I know how she is. She knows how I am. And like in a lot of aspects, we want the same things as far as wrestling, as far as equality for women and minorities. We both we're both double minorities, you know, uh, ethnicity wise and being women in this business. So we both have had, you know, our share of struggles that we we've communicated with each other. So we learn a lot from each other, from our mistakes, from our successes. And we just want to continue to grow and see the best version of each other. And I don't even know what your question is anymore. I'm just starting to ramble. I don't know if I hit the nail on the head or whatever. <laughs> or whatever the You're getting was. all the best parts, Holiday. It's all okay. good. You know, it's, okay. it's amazing because one of the things that I personally really like about Mission Pro and about Thunder's mission for Mission Pro is making sure that women are empowered and empowered not just as wrestlers, but as business people. You know, what's one of the most significant things that you have learned being a part of Mission Pro Wrestling, being in Thunder Rosa's circle in terms of business itself and making sure that you are financially stabilizing yourself for your future? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I don't don't know if I have one answer or whatever. Like I said, you know, Thunder and I have been around each other for a long, long time. So, like, you know, I know she's she's always, I've loved that about her. She's always had that business mind. It's like, you know, because I've I've always been the crazy one. Like, I'll give my body to this guy in the ring. She's like, no, screw that. We don't got to do that, brother. Like, you know, we can take care of ourselves and, like, we can walk away from this with all our limbs intact and still have some money in the bank. And, like, I I love that her about her. Like, she's always business-minded. And all the people that are around her, myself included, especially with Mission Pro and bringing in a lot of younger girls or girls that just might not know, like it's it sucks because a lot of time these schools are not educating people on the business aspects of it. It's a little wrestling and go out in the world. But nobody tells you a lot of these places aren't educating people on about bookings, about negotiating fees, about trademarking your names, about reading over contracts. There's so many people I know that like have contracts and are not happy. But it's all about I got to get my Internet hype and Internet clout and be like, I'm signed. But these people are signed to these contracts and living in hell like they're not happy behind the scenes, but they post about it that they're happy and everybody thinks it's cool. But you got this sucky contract where you're not making anything on the front end. You're not making anything on the back end. You don't own your name. You don't you know, you don't have merchandise rights or anything like like all of that. Like she is the like renaissance businesswoman or whatever. Like she's all always about her. She's always about her money. She's always about her dollar. and like making sure it makes sense but again you know she's she's had different contracts with lucha underground and wa so like i i've learned from her not only successes but from her failures and you know she'll tell me like hey don't do this i've I've been there with this and that you know and she and like she's a straight shooter she'll tell you straight up and you know um that's some things like people in the business have hated on her for it but like mm-hmm. she's always been true to herself and what she believes and she wants that for everybody else like you know get yours because the business and the companies they're going to get theirs so look out for you because at the end of the day, the business, the big companies are going to protect themselves. So you got to make sure you're doing the same thing. And it's just something we're not educated on as wrestlers. And you got to kind of learn yourself, which is messed up. But that's the way the game is, I guess. Right, right. And speaking of big promotions, one of the major questions that your fans have to this day is what's going on, Holiday? Why, why is she not signed with a major promotion? And I know that could be a, a very loaded question, but I'm going to ask it, you know, in your opinion, what, why do you think this is? Is it something that you're kind of just, because some wrestlers definitely just say to themselves, you know what, I don't want to be signed with a major promotion. I want to have ownership of my career in a different way. What's your take on the situation? Uh, I just want to say, I love my fans and I appreciate you guys for supporting uh like seriously one of the main reasons why i legit stay doing this and like you guys keep me you know grounded is why i do love this crazy stuff and while i'm willing to go and do all that stuff to my body so thank you guys for the unwilling dying support as always um and i I think it's about perspective again i feel like we're in we're in an era of clout and and so many people I feel like want to be signed just to go run to the internet and say I'm signed, but people aren't looking at contracts and stuff. I feel like, I feel like it's it's how you measure success. For me, I, I said I've always wanted to be a professional wrestler, and I I am that regardless if I'm signed or not. Like, I, I pay my bills off wrestling. You know, I'm I'm eating off wrestling. You know, when COVID opens up, I, hopefully I'll get to travel around the world again. Like before that, you know, I was doing that. I was traveling the world, traveling, doing European tours, like off of wrestling, and that's all I've ever wanted is to live off wrestling, to make a career off wrestling. And I've done that. 
But unfortunately, like when you're on an independent level, again, again, I feel like it's the the word indies. People are like, uh, oh, you're a wrestler on oh, the indies. Uh, uh. It's like you can make money on the indies. Like I try to tell people that all the time. Like some people like looking for these contracts, like there's money to be made out here in these streets. If you are hustling and working, like some people don't, some people are not used to the grind. Some people have been in a contract situation where everything is done for them and handed to them. So some people, I don't want to say they're not, they don't know hard work, but like, if you're not afraid to work, there, there's money to be made out here. There's tours to be had. There's towns to be seen. Um, and also like every place is not for, you know, everyone. Like, you know, you can make a post and somebody's like, oh, when are you going to go to AEW with Thunder Rosa? Like, that might not be my path. That might not be my journey. That might not be the place for me. That might be the place for Thunder. That might not be the place for me. There are different companies out there and, and every company is not for everyone. You know, uh, if my journey leads me to be signed to somewhere cool, if not, you know, um, I'm going to do what I love as long as I can to the wheels fall off. So hopefully that answers the question. I don't know, guys. 100% over here. And, and it's very profound because now we're in a space where things are changing so rapidly, even within the past few weeks, you know, seeing what's going on with Ring of Honor and a lot of things are in flux and we're heading into a period that's quite honestly unknown, not just in wrestling, but in the world. But you did mention when things open up a bit more, you want to travel again. What's the first country that you definitely want to go to once that becomes a possibility to go wrestle? Oh, the UK, the UK, the UK, the UK, top, top notch. I've, and, you know, if anybody listens to old interviews, I've always said, like, I've never felt like I've had a home in wrestling. I think Mission Pro is trying to change that a little bit. Um, but anytime I've been to the UK, man, it was just like love, like love that I feel like, unfortunately, I have not experienced in the US. It's just like they get me, they they F with me, like, like, ah, like I like if I could go over there and not come back sometimes. That's what I said, like. Uh, shout out to Pro Wrestling E, Progress, all the amazing companies over there. Like, no, yeah, when it when it's time, gone, gone, gone. Yes, yes. Is there a particular wrestler over in the UK that you really you're you're waiting to get in the ring with and and battle it out? Ah, uh, all right. See, you didn't get you didn't you didn't ask you didn't give me this pre vetted question. <laughs> All right. Okay. No. Uh, oh man. I saw, like I, I'm terrible with names. I see all their faces like right now. Uh, I mean, some people I've worked before. I definitely love to work again. Uh, Lana Austin, uh, mm-hmm. Charlie Evans, uh, Sammy James. Uh, she's one of the pro wrestling Eve champions. Uh, Rio O'Reilly. Um, man. Yeah. Ah. Uh, there's, there's, I see him. I see him in my head. Mercedes Blaze. I would love to throw down with her. Uh, Roxy. I don't know if it's Roxy Foxy, something like that. I'm sorry. Sorry, y'all. But uh, yes. All, all, my, all my UK blokes. Like, because they go. Like, people talk about, like, they've tried to bring British strong style over here. And I get it. It ain't the same. Like, when they say strong style, they mean it. And, like, I was trained by Gangro, and he trained me to lay it in. And I hate when I work freaking people and they're complaining about getting hit. It's like, are you are you a wrestler or are you not? Because like this is what we do. And there's a safe way to hit people, and I'm always about that. But it's like they they effing go over there and ain't nobody boohooing complaining because you made contact with them. That's what we do. That's what we get paid to do. And so yeah, UK shout out to my UK fam. Love them. Love them. Love them. That's just, when the floodgates open, things are gonna happen. It's going to be popping. It's it's yes. not going to be a game. Mm-hmm. I, I can't wait. We're here for that holiday. Yeah. You know? yeah. What else? <laughs> hey, wait. Right? What else do you hope to achieve in the next couple of years? As, you know, we were just saying the, the company, or rather the wrestling business is in flux. Things are changing. But there's a lot of exciting things ahead. At least that's what I feel. So what do you hope to achieve? Uh, within the next year or so in your career and things that you just can't wait to see manifest into your life. Ooh, that's deep. Oh, that was deep and manifest into your life. I like the way you put that. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, this is it's tough to say in the next couple years, if you asked anyone close in my circle, I wouldn't be wrestling right now. Like I would have quit already, but here I am still here get my wrestling fix or whatever. It's a drug. It's a drug. You know, I, I always keep saying I'm going to walk away, but here I am. So um, it's hard. No, because 
I feel like these last couple of years, every year I've been like, all right, this is my last year. I, I, and I'm never going to be the one that's going to make an announcement and saying I'm retiring. I'm just going to disappear one day. You're not going to see me posting. Social media will disappear. So that's how that's going to happen. So I'm never going to make an announcement like this is it. Retirement tour. I'm just going to go fuck off. So um, uh, it's, it's hard to say. It's like, again, like, so I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know if this, this upcoming year could be my last year. Like, I feel like these last couple of years, that's how I've been looking at things like, all right, this might be, this might be it. So what do I want to accomplish? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in talks with some companies and hopefully, you know, uh, things will work out there again, definitely going to go back to the UK. You know, my peoples are waiting on me. They're already like, I've got some messages. Like, when are you coming back? I'm like, oh, y'all got dates. Let's go run it, run it. Let's go. You know? So, um, I don't know. Again, like it's weird since the pandemic, I've been kind of looking at every year. It might be my last year. And I feel like I'm still going into it with that mindset. Cause it might be, I don't know. Um, I said, I want to do some bomb, bomb, a UK tours. Uh, and I guess now the mission pro title <laughs> said, I don't know. They, they came that responsibility. It's just like, whoop, went over my head. Okay. I guess I got to put out some, some banger a matches. Um, find the best competition that's out there and just leave the best footage possible. It's, it's again, it's hard for me to say what I want for the next year. Cause again, I go into it. I haven't, I haven't even went over my goals for next year. So that's where we're at. Well, that's where we're at with that Candace. I can't, I can't give you a full answer right there. Cause still, I don't still know. Um, it's something I'm trickulating and seeing, but yeah, I've been going into it. Like it could be my last. So I don't know. Uh, hard to say, hard to say. Yeah. And that's fair enough. Right. You, some people live day to day, others plan things out a year in advance. You know, everyone's on their own significant journey and there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're living your best life and doing what's best for you, I can't knock that. Right. And you mentioned, you know, working with other companies or, or being in talks with other companies, but you are sure. currently with MLW. And I wanted to touch on that as well, because they're now, and a lot of fans are so happy, myself included, that they're finally, you know, with this new featherweight division for the women and doing their thing in that respect. How has it been for you being a part of this new part of their history at MLW and working matches as a part of their featherweight division? Um. It's been good. It's been good. No, I'm just trying to think how to respond to the question. Um, you said that I'm with them. I mean, like, you know, uh, I don't know if I'm with them. I mean, they, they have me on, which is, which is amazing, which is great. Um, you know, that, that was another place that I had reached out to for a while, you know, before there were women's matches. So I'm amazingly excited. And, you know, they have Dave Prezak on, if you guys are familiar with Shimmer, you know, the man behind Shimmer and he definitely knows, you know, his, his uh his his talents for sure so of course he's bringing in you know people that he knows and he trusts can go um and it's been amazing so far just like as far as locker room like amazing freaking people and it's all just like good energy good vibes like everybody is it's same with the locker room everybody's happy to be here like all right we get to we get to pop this off like don't don't shit the bed or nothing because you know we gotta because we gotta make a good impression we're the first so like let's let's go f and rock this like everybody's super supportive everybody's happy to be there everybody's happy that we can be the ones to bring in this featherweight division, bring in the women to MLW and just, again, like it, it, stems, it stems from the locker room. Like the energy there is just so positive. Everybody's there uplifting each other. It's a great group of girls so far, you know, and um, it's, no, it's, it's been great. You know, even, you know, not just the girls, the entire locker room is cool, but you know, just that, that women camaraderie, everybody's like, Oh, you're here, you're here. Oh snap. What's up? What's up? Let's do this. Like it's, 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 it's really cool. It's really good, positive vibes so far. All good stuff. Hopefully that, you know, hopefully that continues and bring more girls in there and, uh, you know, showing them what we can do. I love it. I love to hear that. You know, you, you can also you can't knock a really good locker room filled with positivity. That's what you always hope to see when you're entering promotions. <laughs> exactly. Fingers crossed. It, may, it makes a difference. It makes such a difference. Yes, yes. And another thing that we all can't wait to see is you defending your title at Mission Pro, we have two shows coming up, but by the time this interview airs, we will be in the throes of December leading up to the December 11th show. So 
without spoiling, and I'm saying this with all of my interviews with every Mission Pro representative because we don't want to spoil anything, right? But without spoiling for December 11th, you know, what can we potentially see uh, in your title defense? If you will be, I'm assuming you will be defending your title in in December. (laughs) So you're asking me about December before November happens, correct? (laughs) Oh man, you can't do that. Even as much as as much confidence as I have in myself, you know, I have every plan in my head to walk in this coming Saturday as a Mission Pro champion and leave out. But you never know what could happen in wrestling. I mean, just the way I won the Mission Pro title, you know, it it, it was a situation. I won the Battle Royal that, that lets me being able to challenge, you know, the champion anytime, anywhere. I, I saw opportunity. A new a new champion was crowned after they finished their match. I came out and, you know, I took my opportunity. You know, I'm sure Jasmine Lord didn't see that happen. She saw herself, you know, she got that strap. She saw herself going home with it. Two seconds later, bam, uh-uh, changes. Like, and wrestling can happen like that. So, like, you know, I'm very confident in myself and my abilities. Shout out to Maddie Dutt, my opponent. She is a very uh, rising up and coming uh, worker. And I'm I'm definitely excited to work with her. Excited to beat her down a bit. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, you never know what can happen. Like, I mean, you know. Forbid, you know, something could happen injury wise and, you know, things could change like that. You never nothing in our business is ever certain. So but, uh, you know, but if I could be a fortune teller, I do see myself walking in with the strap in December and I'm going to defend it and give you guys another banger. Bangers on bangers. That's that's what I'm doing till we out. Bangers only bangers until we till we clock out. Yeah, there it is. But yeah, I mean, Mission Pro always has some stuff up its sleeve. You know, we're always looking to top, make each show better than the last one. like. And again, it's about everybody doing their part. And I think that's why Mission Pro has been so successful. And we're always looking to put on the best show out there, not just regardless of who we're running against, not the best women's show or or this. We want to put on the best wrestling show, period, every time we enter a building. And that that's what we're about. And we will continue to deliver that every single time. Surely, surely. And my final question to you, it's also Mission Pro related. Uh, and also really just related to wrestling as a whole, because there are a lot of girls and women that look up to you. They look up to your career. They've seen it's true. There's a lot of people that really, you know, they they love you. They love your career. They love what you've done in this business. And for anyone that's come to you or, or is thinking, you know, there could be someone watching that might want to approach you and ask, you know, how can I be a wrestler? How can I have the career that you've had and the success that you've achieved? What advice would you give to them? Um, training for, for one, um, you know, find a good reputable school and do your research on these schools. Like there are so many schools popping up now. It seems like, um, and just because a school has a name attached to it, don't just necessarily flock to that. Like going a lot of these schools, they should have like a trial, like a one or two day or a week trial. Go try them out. Like don't sign up to something immediately just because oh, so-and-so's name is attached to it. And not not to dig on anybody's school or whatever. Sometimes when these bigger names are attached to the school, they're not even there. So a lot of people are coming into it as wrestling fans. Like, oh, I want to go to so-and-so school. So-and-so is assigned somewhere else. They're not going to be there teaching you, you know, and you want to make sure like who is teaching is, you know, able and actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Qualified. It's who's actually qualified. And it's not just some student that's only been there two weeks that's teaching you. Like, go do your research on these schools. Don't just sign up because a name is attached to it. Like, do your homework um, and and realize that this is a selfless business. You might put so much back into it and never get anything. So you got to understand, like, I come across so many girls and they're like, I never get to win and this and that. It's like, you got to remember the business doesn't owe you anything. Like, like I could tell you stories for stories on top of days. Like this business owes you nothing. If if you want to do it, like be coming from a pace, place of passion, uh, have patience and and know it's a, it's a continuing grind. It's a continuous hustle. Um, Like I said before, you said we're in times of the unknown. Wrestling is forever the unknown. Even if you have a contract, like, you know, a lot of these contracts can be cut and people are going like that. Like we see online all the time, all these releases out of nowhere, like nothing in this business is guaranteed. So you got to get that in your head. Like it's a lot, it's a lot to wrap around a good place to training, like, and actually train. Don't just think like you learned one or two things. You're ready to get in there. Like have a good solid foundation of a good base. I trained for two years before I started wrestling professionally, you know, like, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. Like, cause I could have went out there looking like hot garbage. I know a lot of, a lot of people that start off they go with like 
unfortunately, I hate it happens in our business a lot. They have a boyfriend or something who will teach them a couple cool moves and they won't do official, official training and they're go out and they're ready. They can do a couple cool moves, but they can't call a match. They can't work. They can't wrestle. They can't call sh- on the fly. Like they have to remember, they have to write out everything. Like that's not how it should be. You know, uh, ah, this is an ended, loaded ended question. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm, I'm it. so um, mm-hmm. and, and I don't even know. I mean, like, I wouldn't even compare it to like have a career like mine. Like, I mean, remember everybody is on their own journey. Like, no, no, there's no same path for everyone. Like, you know, you might join a wrestling school and think, okay, I'm here. I want to, I want to, you know, join WWE. That's my goal. Somebody else might be like, I want to train. I've had friends on the independent scene. I want to start working there. Maybe I want to go to New Japan or whatever. Remember, there's so many different roles in wrestling. There's never just one. And don't think because somebody's going down this path, you have to go that way. Like, figure out what's best for you because there's going to be so many people in your ear telling you, you need to do this, you need to do that. So you gotta, you're got to gonna have to figure out who you are as a person, I feel like. And a lot of it's a lot of self-discovery. Um, I feel like a lot of wrestlers have some issues and a lot of it is uh, art imitating life. So, you know... Um, yeah, a lot. Uh, have training, have patience, have a good support system because there's going to be so many people who would be like, oh, you want to do wrestling? You want to do that stuff? Like, you know, like you have the part, have the right people in your circle. Realize you might lose some friends. You might lose some people who you thought were friends. Like you're going to it's a lot of nights and a lot of things you got to sacrifice. And 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 that's not for everybody. And know what you want. If you can handle a life on the road, if you can handle missing birthday parties, missing weddings and stuff. What are you willing to sacrifice if you really want this? How bad do you want it? Because some people say they want it. They want to go in the ring and roll around and they do a couple bumps. They're like, oh, it's not for me. Uh, I can't make this person's uh, bar mitzvah. Uh, I can't do it. Like, I mean, have a have a real heart to heart with yourself and figure out if it's for you or not. I think I answered the question. I don't know. I went on a ramble. That was that was great. Well, thank you so much, Holiday, for this fantastic interview. <laughs> your face. <laughs> this is like, my face. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it makes faces. I'm awkward. I'm awkward. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, own whatever your flavor is. Own it. Right. Own it. Be proud. And I'm go awkward. Out. Team awkward. Twenty thousand. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate you for it. We really do. We love your work. Thank you so much for your time and your talents. And we can't wait to see you defend the title for Mission Pro Wrestling and to continue doing your thing in that promotion. If you have any parting thoughts, anything you want to add, this is your time. But if not, we can just sign off. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for all the support. Follow me, all the well wishes, all that good stuff. Since we are doing this and it is that era... Follow me on Twitter at Holiday, my YouTube channel at Holiday, on Facebook at Holiday, Instagram is Holiday, and I, three different words all together. If you want some Holiday merch, storefrontier.com slash Holiday. I'm on Cameo now if you want some special shout outs. Ha ha, only I can do. Hit that up. I think that's all the plugs I got. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the hard work you're doing to keep us out there and, you know, in the know of folks. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Holiday, and thank you all for watching another episode of Face Turn with Candice Cornelia, where we give you the exclusive scoops on all of your favorite wrestlers. Stay tuned for more, but for now, signing off. And don't forget, watch Mission Pro Wrestling December 11th. Check it out and stay tuned. Bye for now.